Hello everyone, today is a perfume video part two of my series of my current fragrance collection, wardrobe, whatever. I generally film once a year an update on what perfumes I am using or using up or have started trying and wearing. My perfume wardrobe really does change from year to year by a lot, so I do think that it's quite dynamic. It's almost never stagnant. There's staple fragrances that you'll see that are going to be the same as they were last year. There, there's a lot of new stuff um, that I have brought in, and there's a lot of stuff that left my possession, either by being finished or by being sold. So today we are going to focus on florals. Now. These are loose categories that I personally break up my fragrances into. I really don't have to uh, be very precise, but uh, the part number one was all about winter cold weather fragrances and uh, fragrances for the holidays. And now we're going to be talking about florals. Lovers of florals will rejoice. There's a lot going on here. Uh, and we'll start in the back. So the first floral fragrance that I wanted to introduce was Pure Musk from Narcisse Rodriguez from the For Her line. Uh, this guy is very interesting because it is very piercing. <laughs> it is it is uh, high frequency, um, very high register, and uh, not everybody is going to like that. I think there's nothing mellow about it. This is not a relaxed scent. Um, it is, again, very high frequency and uh, very in-your-face floral. If you do like that, I think you're going to very much like this scent. I'm about a third done with it, so I have about two thirds remaining. Now, this scent is very near and dear to me because I have a personal relationship with this kind of a scent because uh, as a four or five year old, this was my first perfume experience. Um, as a four or five year old, uh, my dad brought a Barbie doll from Germany and it was um, difficult to get in Eastern Europe an authentic Barbie doll and my particular Barbie doll had a fragrance with her um, so Barbie doll I wasn't playing that much with but that scent I was obsessed with for like two or three years until I completely ran out and of course I could never find something like that so as a three or four year old I was just like microdosing that scent and sniffing it and just being absolutely obsessed with it and for years I was kind of trying to figure something similar and trying to find something similar because I do enjoy scent memories and it's quite quite a positive trigger to remember something from your childhood. Um, I mean, not always childhood memories are pleasant, but this particular one is something that I did want to recall. And I was searching for that scent for, for, for forever. I have never found something that was exactly the same. And I would say uh, Pure Musk is about 95% there. So for me, this is more not for wearing, but for smelling, because it is that very, very close dupe of <laughs> that Barbie scent that I had as a child. I know weird reason to have a scent, but you know, scent memories are something that is very near and dear to my heart. So I do love it when a scent is really carrying me back into my childhood and this pure musk one does that. Now objectively, if I didn't have that scent memory, I'm not sure I would purchase this because it is very, it's a bit screechy. Um, and some people really like it, like for instance Clinique Happy for me with Afrasia is a bit screechy, but it's a pretty popular scent. So if you do like those high frequency perfumes, I think this will be great. Um, for me, it's a very near and dear to my heart perfume, but not one that I reach for to wear a ton. I smell it frequently though. Then I have my third bottle of this particular scent, which is Guerlain Aqua Allegoria Flora Nymphaea. Um, this is a new bottle. I just opened it. I think I sprayed it maybe once. Um, and uh, when initially the scent was released, I bought three bottles. Two of them I've used up to completion. This is the third one. And I will never be able to buy the scent again. It was a limited edition perfume. Um, this is a beautiful... Um, a beautiful floral that I think is wearable in multiple seasons, um, any season at all really, uh, but it is a honeyed, a pollen filled, beautiful floral, white floral, and it's the honey filled, um, powdery pollen sort of quality that makes it very special. Now I haven't found something that is exactly the same, although I did find honeyed scents that I liked, but I haven't found a dupe for this or something similar. So if you do know of a scent that is going to mimic this guy, uh, let me know because I am interested because I probably won't be able to get this again. But one of my favorites, Florinum Faye, is a beautiful, beautiful 
uh, Aqua Allegoria scent, probably the most um, successful of the Aqua Allegoria lineup, in my personal humble opinion. We have a very budget pick here, which I tremendously enjoyed for years now and will continue to repurchase. Uh, this year I'm not doing budget fragrances because I just don't have a lot of them left. I have just a couple, so uh, it's not worth doing a, a video. I, I'll just mention which ones are less expensive and this is one of them. I think this is a beautiful sunshine floral uh, with a lot of citrus backing. So if you like a floor, if you like to explore florals and you want something very affordable, then that vintage bloom from Jessica Simpson is an excellent choice. This is actually a fantastic fragrance. Um, very hard to find good quality fragrances in the budget segment of the market, and this is definitely one of those finds. I think very wearable, very beautiful, nicely constructed, and uh, long lasting. Just nothing wrong with it. I finished multiple bottles of it. I don't know how many, maybe three or four. Um, and I recently repurchased it. I've started using it as well. Um, I don't think this will live very long because it is one of my favorites in terms of florals. Um, we have two more in the same category, sunshine florals. One of them is a Burberry Weekend, uh, and this guy I've worn for many, many years. Probably ever since I've worn fragrances, I've worn Burberry Weekend. It was released in early 2000s or late 90s. And this is also a like um, sun-filled uh, meadow of <laughs> florals. There is a fruity edge to it. There's a lot of nectar in here. Uh, so a, a fruity sunshine floral it is, and I think very wearable. I think a lot of people would really enjoy it. It's easy to pull off and also seasonless. I would say maybe spring, summer more so than, than winter, but who doesn't like a happy floral in the winter? And another happy floral is this guy, which is Parfum d'été from Kinzo. And I adore this scent because of this watery, um, watery floral quality to it. So um, this one is lightweight. It's very, very happy again, the same meadows, but if here these meadows are in full on midsummer bloom, here we have uh, early spring where the um, ice and snow has just melted and there are little streams of sparkling water kind of uh, making its way into a neighboring river and those brooks and springs are freshening up the florals and just giving that cool watery edge to it. But Parfum d'Ate provides us with that specific kind of sensation and I think very very beautifully done as well. I've repurchased um, I've repurchased Parfum d'Ate uh, a couple times. I don't think more than twice. I, I repurchased it twice. Then we have, let's talk about Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel. And this is uh, L'eau Privée, specifically that flanker. I'm not talking about any other Cocos right now. Although this is definitely a Coco Mademoiselle fragrance, no doubt about it. The DNA is clearly there. Uh, however, this lacks the really heavy patchouli that's generally present in that lineup. And there isn't a scent before this one was released that didn't have a very heavy patchouli in the Mademoiselle line, which is why I was never wearing it. I don't like the very heavy patch that's there. It's overwhelming for me. I don't love it. Uh, I fully recognize that somebody else might. I don't. Uh, so I was extremely happy when they released patchouli-free version, basically. So this is a bit vintage-inspired, a bit boudoir, uh, a bit um, sheer nightgown, Hollywood starlet from the 40s sort of situation. That's that's where my mind is going when I'm smelling this. I think a beautiful floral, nicely crafted, wears an average amount of time. Uh, it's uh, au pour nuit. I would say, yeah, sure, uh, nighttime wear is probably a good idea, but it is a rather intimate, not overwhelming in terms of its uh, projection. Longevity is okay, um, probably about five hours or so. I like it. Um, I like it a lot. I'm not sure yet that this is a, going to be a repurchase for me, but I like it enough to, to to probably use it up completely. I just purchased this particular fragrance this year. I've used it up a little bit, but not, not a ton of use quite yet. 
Next, we have another Narciso uh, fragrance, which is of course not a surprise because they do basically floral musks. That's most of what they produce. And this is one of those. Now, um, I have many fragrances in the For Her line. Some of them are heavier. This is mid-weight, uh, beautiful, velvety floral, but this is not a big rose. This is more sort of peony filled, uh, slightly more lightweight, approachable uh, bouquet of flowers. And I like it a lot. Now the mosque is exactly the same as the for her in L'Absolu. And I do enjoy that. L'Absolu is a more deep and dark version of this kind of a scent with a fruitier edge. Now here's musk and florals. That's what is here. So if you want um, a bouquet of flowers, of all kinds of flowers, uh, on a beautiful musk, I think Fleur Musque uh, is going to be a very good choice for you. I enjoy this scent a lot and I do prefer to wear it in the springtime normally. That's when I pull for it. Um, then we have an Erin fragrance here. This is Erin Lilac Path. This is the only Erin I own right now. And for me, this is a, a wonderful spring scent that I've been wearing for the past couple of springs. And as you can see, I'm halfway through the bottle. I don't think it'll survive more than a couple years um, in my possession. And it's a 50 ml uh, bottle. I don't think they make anything smaller than that, maybe in rollers, but not in a sprayer bottle. I don't think there is a 30 ml option, um, but correct me if I am wrong on this i'd like to know so lilac path is literally just lilac smell so it's a very much a solly floor i don't think you'll find much else in it it's very authentic very realistic lilacs if you're a fan of lilacs you will enjoy it if you aren't a big fan of lilacs you will not understand what all the kerfuffle is about but very very straightforward basic 100% uh, clear lilac scent if you like lilacs then here you go this will it smell exactly like a bouquet of lilacs or a lilac bush that you're passing by. Um, if you close your eyes and you smell it, it smells like a lilac bush. You probably won't be able to tell from to tell it from the real thing. Then we have two of the Narciso Rouge cubes. It's from the Narciso line. Uh, and we have the Eau de Parfum in the all red. And with the transparent top, we have the Eau de Toilette. Let's start with the Eau de Parfum. This is going to be great for the lovers of Big Red Rose. <laughs> this reminds me in a way of uh, David Yurman, David Yurman, a namesake uh, fragrance, which is a juicy, beautiful, big rose. This is kind of the same thing, um, the same kind of a fragrance, big, juicy, beautiful rose with gorgeous musk base, as always with Narciso. Um, and this is there is a creaminess to it for sure and there's a velvety quality to the rose it's very ripe very dark very red very uh deep in color and its quality um so if you're a lover of roses if you love rose fragrances then i think narciso rouge is going to be a good choice for you because there is this just gorgeous decadent rose kind of swimming in here and you will probably enjoy that uh, the other toilet version is the Lily of the Valley version of the same kind of scent. So the rose is not the dominant uh, floral here. Here we have a much more, I wouldn't say shrill, but a higher um, a shift to a higher octave here. And Lily of the Valley, really clean white floral, very pure, very... Uh, we're coming out of winter, going into the spring. Uh, um, also, just the li lily of the valley just peeking out from the snow. I know that it doesn't usually, but uh, it, that's what I'm imagining. It's that fresh. That lily of the valley is that fresh. It's just cropping through, um, just just starting to bloom, and that is the cleanest scent in, that is in here. Now, I think it's a beautiful scent. I'm not sure that it's repurchase worthy quite yet, but I do enjoy it. And I have about one third used up at this point. I will continue using it. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful floral um, and uh, definitely worthy of checking out, especially if you're a fan of white florals and you're a fan of um, Narciso Musk because the musk is definitely highlighted here. Pretty uh, and easy to pull off spring floral for me. So these are the floral scents that I have. I generally wear quite a bit of florals um, and I do find them very easy to pull off at, in any 
at, at any time of the year. And uh, a lot of them I will tend to wear in spring for some reason after a long winter that we have here in Canada. I do enjoy perking up with a little bit of a floral um, a floral hint, uh, an idea that the plants are going to just revive, be revived very soon by sunshine and moisture and soon enough the snow will be gone. So early spring is where I wear the most. Um, tell me, what do you like to wear out of the floral category? Do you have any of the ones that I have or do you have other favorites? Leave that down below. We're all curious to find out um, and uh, share. Very, very interesting to see what other people are wearing. That's it for today. Have a good day. Um, good luck. Keep yourself well. Keep yourself healthy and have fun. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.